103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, December, um, no it's not, it's January 17th, <laughs> 2021. Not good yeah. Job. I'm Larry Rhodes or Doubter 5 and as usual we have our co-host Wombat on the phone with us. Hello Wombat. Dun, 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 dun. That's it. Mm, okay. I do recognize it. I can't name it, but I recognize it. And our guests today are Chad, Dread Pirate Higgs, uh, George 1 and George 2, and Boudreaux. Welcome all. Hi. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in Knoxville, well, you're just not. There are several atheist, free-thinking, and rationalist groups that exist right here in Knoxville, and we'll be telling you how you can connect with them right after the mid-show break. Also, did you know that there was a streaming call-in atheist video show broadcasting here in Knoxville? It has been for over 10 years. Did you know that one, Beth? Uh, I thought the Emmys already happened, but okay, fine. That's great. Yeah, they uh, have, but Ryan Seacrest is hosting or something? I'm, I'm really looking no, really forward to it. Yeah. No, no. Wrong let's channel. go <laughs> let's go queen's gambit come on we'll, we'll tell you more about how you can find it uh after the mid-show break if you'd like to interact with us during the show go to facebook and do a search for digital free thought radio hour and post a message there and we'll see it and respond hmm. uh, what's the topic today wombat we're gonna be talking about some free speech today and how all of you guys are violating and stepping on my rights but before we get into no, that, let's I get into it. our uh, weekly invocation from our own Dread Pirate Hicks. Okay. Oh, Dread, you're on mute. <laughs> He's coming in. We still got Zoom problems, and it's 2021. Can you believe that? Anyway. Yep. User error. Okay. Product. Can you hear me? <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right. Guard his true self did reveal. Avoid all go false gods with zeal. He made one mistake. All the others are fake. But gave us no hint which is real. Mm. Raw. Thank you guys so much. Hey, I want to go to what some of the uh, most exciting times of this, you know, weekly get together. And I want to know how everybody's doing. Dread Pirate, you had so much on your list from last week. You had a court case. You got classes coming up. You're in Canada. <laughs> What's going on with you? How are you doing? I, I'm managing pretty good. Um, I have a meeting uh, Tuesday with uh, uh, a prominent uh, retired lawyer um, who we've met a couple of times with respect to the, the court case. I've got my milk stool argument uh, well conceived and well built, so good. I think it's a slam dunk. Um, just as long as the uh, the judge is is open to uh, hearing reason. Right. As opposed to uh, whatever the Human Rights Tribunal is trying to pass uh, as uh, a good argument. Uh, class, right now I've only got uh, one person signed up, um, but, uh, you know, like all things, most things happen in the uh, in the 11th hour. Yeah. Uh, of course, I am looking for, I think I posted that on the SCE channel, uh, looking for some uh, 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 creator picks uh, sure, for SE sure. arguments so that yep. I can uh, feature those in the, in the class, so. You're asking for best hits of SE content producers if they yes. show them in the class. You yes. have access to all my stuff, but I can give you some links to whatever yeah. would stand yeah. out to you. It saves yeah. me scouring because I like them all. Yeah. So. Yeah. Plus, we've been doing it for years now, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's hey, right. Buffalo, it's good to see you again. How you been doing? Yeah. How you been holding up? Thanks. Are you vaccinated? <laughs> I am vaccinated. Nice. I'm a little, nice. I'm, I'm a little bit, uh, uh, I have some feelings about that. And that is, I had promised myself that I would wait until all of the K through 12 teachers were vaccinated before I would take a vaccine. But of course, the circumstances surrounding the vaccination is are, are changing constantly. And 
And our university decided to do what apparently everybody's going to do now and just try to vaccine everybody and not subdivide folks because it seems to be slowing things down. Sure. So I got the invitation uh, actually from my daughter, Eric's wife, made me aware of the fact that it was sitting on my email and um, signed up and got her done. Good. Good to hear it. And Kentucky, you're doing a great job getting everybody vaccinated. I mean, it's not just Buffalo. It's Eric himself, too, right? Is that accurate? Yeah. Yep. My wife and I are vaccinated. Uh, and the same same reason, even even more, <laughs> maybe more guilt attached for me. Uh, I, I I really didn't want it until, you know, uh, people. Did you get vaccination uh, one and two or just one so far? Just, uh, just the just the one. It, it was Wednesday. So, I mean, we're not even a week. My my sure. shoulder feels or my arm feels fine now. But the first couple of days, it was pretty sore. Like mm. Dealing with it OK? If you have any side effects or anything? None, None for whatsoever me. for me. I was ready for it, though. I was. Yeah. Uh, I would have, <laughs> I would have smiled through the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, like put yeah. it in my tongue. I'll be fine with it. Yeah, yeah like, thank you, science. Uh, but hey. Kentucky's fifty percent. I think among we're like among the eight states that have actually used fifty percent of their doses. Just nice. great. It's great. Yeah, use them. Uh, George, how you been holding up? Oh, pretty good. Um, I am signed up to get the uh, uh, vaccination. And I'm actually on two different lists, but one of them, I have an, an actual appointment. And um, so it's going to be a drive-by, you know, I'm, I'm going to nice. get my, arm, hang, my sure. arm hanging out the window to the city park. <laughs> yeah, I've seen and, that. And um, after I get the second vaccination, I am determined to go to Walmart. And when I pass somebody who's not wearing a mask, I'm going to lower my mask and cough. <laughs> Cough in their faces. No, what you should do is lower their mask and cough into their No, no. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I, that's one. a call to action. I'm not, I'll take that back. I take that back. Thank no, you, Larry. Thank you, Larry. I took that <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, moving on. Chad the Impaler, it's been forever. Look how big his arms are. He's been flipping houses this whole time. Oh, right? they're huge. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm great. I'm great. Uh, yet to be vaccinated, although here in Kentucky. So it seems like the University of Kentucky is doing a better job than the state of Kentucky. Hmm. Um, yeah, uh, we among the common folk um, are, are not as vaccinated, I think, as, as some of the others. I, I could be wrong about that. But so I'll give props to the university and uh, I guess, yeah, props where it's deserved. But uh, there's a long way to go. I, mean, I don't know how many millions of people we have here in Kentucky. And you said, Eric, that there were, uh, what, 50 percent of the vaccines that were available have been distributed. Do we, we know how, what's the total number of that, though? Yeah, I don't. I don't know the number, but just just knowing that like most states are on thirty percent deployment. Hmm. Um, yeah, and, and I will say, what, just pro hmm? what what impresses me is that West Virginia is the best of all. Uh, apparently, they've they've got they've used all of their vaccine, and the governor there is a Republican governor, and yeah. and he uh, established a program that I think is called. Uh, uh, STW, uh, save our, uh, save the wisdom, and he he decided that it's old folks that that are suffering the most from it, so they went out and actively make sure they went to all various different places in the state and got all the older people vaccinated. Wow, nice, very so good. They're, they're keeping up with the uh, the use <laughs> of the vaccine they have very well. Very good. Yeah, very yeah. Cool. I think in those I think in those communities, and this this could be generalizing. Um, in these Appalachian communities, there are patriarchs and matriarchs that are still in play. They, they rely heavily, I think, a lot of, the, at least the families that I know that, that live or that have come from that area, Appalachia, it seems like, it's usually matriarchies, it seems like the, the older gentlemen die before the ladies do and they're left with these old grandmas and memaws that they have to keep alive and, and they're really holding some of these families together. Yeah, yeah. So good. Yeah. That's a good move. Yep. And when it's brought to them, they use it. Yeah. Good. Doubter Five, how you been last week, since last week? Oh, just fine. Um, I haven't signed up any list for a vaccine. I'm 70 years old, so I would think I'd probably want be one of the first vaccinated. But I depend on the VW, I'm sorry, the VA, <coughs> excuse me, 
the Veterans Administration to contact me and sign me up and get me on it, but they have not done that yet. So I'm mm. going to have to be proactive starting Monday and call them up and say, hey, what's what? Absolutely. Gives? Absolutely. Get in there. Better wait till uh, Tuesday. I have uh, signed wait up till myself. Tuesday? Why? Oh. I'm okay. I'm okay. Yeah. Martin Luther King Day. Oh, do we have another oh, holiday coming up? Oh. Okay, I got to get you guys for helping me gotcha. out. Monday. Okay. Guys for helping me out with that. Those always sneak yeah. up on me. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I did sign up for my vaccine. I'm looking forward to hopefully getting it. But uh, because I'm young, I won't. I'm likely not to be getting it until third quarter of this year. That said, I'm also fortunate enough to work at a place where we make incredible filtration media, and so I've been. Um, uh, <laughs> inundated with like, oh, this mask is really nice. Ninety-five percent resistance, but the res the permeability could be a little bit better. Let's. Let, this is this uh, is an N95 mask, but can we make the resistance a little bit lower? I'm a little spoiled with my breathability. I want to work out with this on. And so you're just tweaking stuff all the time. You're just like, yeah, put some more nanofibers on that. It's it's been fun, guys. Free speech is a beautiful thing. Or it's a terrible thing, but it's definitely something that we're going to be talking about. The reason why I want to bring it up was uh, as of last week, Trump can no longer go on Twitter. His Instagram has been canceled. His Snapchat's been closed. His YouTube's been taken, <laughs> taken off the internet. <laughs> and that's just the, 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 the small tip of the iceberg. As he was being impeached, we had an unprecedented silence from the president, uh, our chief in state. And what was interesting was after he had his first time to talk about uh, what had happened, instead of saying, yeah, I'm sorry, you know, I did these things or showing some sort of accountability, his main issues that he wanted to bring up was his free speech violations in terms of being banned by big tech. And so what I want to do is there's, there's a really good discussion here because there's a lot of parallels between that and saying like, hey, you can pray in, tr in school and that you can't do mandatory prayers in school and people used to complain that was a free speech issue. What is free speech? How are we violating it? Is these people who are decrying um, their free speech being um, taken away, are they accurate or not? And maybe we can just start with just the definition of free speech. I know, George, you like definitions. George, what do you mean? What do you think I mean by free speech? Which George? Which you George? know, Buffalo, and you know, George, Larry. Don't do this because oh, when, okay. when, 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 when doubt fires on, I don't make a big deal about this. Okay, as I understand the constitutional guarantees or lack thereof, um, the Bill of Rights in the United States pertains to what the government can do or not do, mm -hmm. and not private parties or corporations. So uh, my interpretation of this, I think, is pretty open and shut. Um, uh, Facebook, for instance, is completely within their rights to shut anybody down who they feel like. And uh, um, they are not the government. The other, the other matter I want to address is this. Uh, we have a tradition that you don't cry fire in a crowded theater. And I would add to that, you do not have the right to incite somebody else to a violent action. I hear you. Right. I hear that. Yeah, so there's limitations okay. there. But uh, let's see, Chad. Would you mind weighing in on what you mean or what do you think I mean by free speech or what the general public thinks they mean by free speech? Well, <clears throat> the general public, I'm not quite sure. Uh, I, I think that uh, it's incredibly important for us to be really careful about this. Uh, of course, the government can't, the government's not allowed to stop us um, from speaking freely, dissent, I don't know, John Adams something like that second mm. president there was some there was some dissent and i believe he made it illegal to speak out against the president that's changed um and it should have changed this is i guess why we have the amendment um so the government can't come down on people but are they allowed to tell private organizations that they have to provide a platform for um those that they disagree with so the, the law in, in the word it doesn't talk about private organizations as I understand it. Um, but I think it's important to, when people practice law, they talk about practicing law because the, the spirit of the law is actually something. And I think the spirit of the amendment is something that we're gonna be talking about 
uh, over the, the coming years. I don't necessarily, uh, well, I think we'll also be talking about whether or not platforms like Facebook and Twitter are considered utilities and we're going to likely have to have some government oversight over these, um, over these platforms so that we can make sure that if, if this is a platform, a single entity is not able to disenfranchise a group of people uh, from their speech. Now, you know, you're free to go somewhere else and start your own platform, uh, which was tried by, I think, some of the more right-leaning folks, and that platform was shut down. It was sure. denied by Apple and I believe uh, Amazon. Google. Google. Yeah, Amazon. we don't have to go over its name, though. Right. It's already yeah. So, so, yeah, all that stuff was shut down. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how I feel about it. I, I'm really, I, I hate seeing anyone being denied the right to speak because I think the poor, the poorest among us who have nothing have the right to speak. And sure. if we deny them platforms, we're disenfranchising. I think we just need to be really careful and not, not, not get gather up too much of our own hubris and, and praise ourselves for shutting down what half the country sees as a tyrant and okay. maybe even more than half of the country sees as someone who's incited some pretty serious violence. All right. I'll stop. Boudreau, you want to fill on that? Your best buddy just talked. <laughs> uh, well, I, I kind of want to go back where you, how you set this up. Um, which is kind of defining the, the term. Sure. Um, and and uh, I'm no expert in this field, but I, I kind of take it to mean the right to say whatever you want as long as it doesn't infringe on other people's rights. And and I think that's where the nuance comes in here. I mean, you can say whatever you want. In fact, on campus, there's a free speech area. Sure. You can go yeah. and we were there. And, uh, we were there. Um, right. and people, people go there and say things that I very yes, much they disagree with, <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, but they have that right. And that's, and that's okay. And I, uh, I, I actually see some of this, the Chad's talking about this, this, uh, cancel culture type of behavior where someone will go and preach at the free speech area on campus. Sure. And then you'll have some, uh, you typically it's a gay rights group come out there and, and shout louder and get in his face and surround him and put signs up and block his camera. And, you know, it's like, well, I'm yes, but we gotta, we gotta be careful here. Uh, again, I think this whole thing is nuanced and, um, I'm, I'm really curious what the conversation is going to be about deplatforming people. Um, because it's, it's a, it sets a crazy precedent that sure. I mean, the second that it happens to us, all of a sudden now it's bad. Yeah, that, there's yeah. there's that too. Uh, I want to hear from Dread, Buffalo, and Doubter Five next. So, Dread, how about you? Where, how do you feel about this? What do you defines free speech and the topic and the co general conversation today? Uh, he's still on mute, even though he muted himself. That's weird. Having some having some hard times. There you go. Oh, no, no, no. I sorry. Um, yeah, yeah, no, I, I agree with the with the definitions already given. Um, I'll add, sort of anecdotally, that I'm sort of still in the midst of a bit of a cancer culture campaign by someone that uh, disagreed with uh, a post I made on uh, a Facebook channel, um, who had to try uh, had to. Um, had tried to have my license revoked from my real estate broker who had to try who had tried to have me um, kicked off a foundation that I work for and uh, it's just been making my my public life here in this small town um, something of a, of a headache um, and I've taken to fighting fighting back now uh, you know to the point of uh, civil um, uh, civil proceedings so uh, I get it I mean you know uh, the cancel culture is, is so freaking hostile and um, and it's nasty and I and it's and it's horrible to see that people who you walk past in other, other situations are have the ability to do this, to be that kind of person, to be that mean, um, and to, uh, you know, treat people that disagree with them with, uh, such anger and hostility. It's, mm. it's really nasty. What's 
cancel culture mean? Yeah. What are all these hip terms you're talking about, Dred? We aren't down with your jazz. <laughs> well, <laughs> cancel culture is yeah. essentially is, is trying to erase someone from public i mean to you know to go after me and my job to go after me and my my public image uh based on something that someone can't even have the decency to have uh you know a, a debate with me in public or debate in private sure. it's rather than rather than try to solve a disagreement or address a, a difference of an opinion it's just we're going for the juggler man and uh, we're taking you down no matter what Dread, that's, wanna, that's what cancel culture yeah. is a lot and of also, anonymous attacks and i do want to head into george's perspective on free speech while we still got time george how do you uh, buffalo what do you feel free speech is and what do you think of the general tone of the conversation so far uh, yeah it's a uh, to me it's, uh, it's a very sticky issue um but i i'd just like to uh speak to the cancel culture aspect which i think we used to call machiavellian character assassination uh and that that somehow that has to be dealt with um but i guess overall i'm waiting to see what happens uh when the issue of whether or not <clears throat> twitter and uh, facebook and so forth have the right to simply cancel out a group and how that's going to be handled in washington by the congress uh or is it going to be a stalemate for years to come it, it, it's a very sticky issue um how about just on free speech what do you think free speech is i think free speech is within the limits of not damaging somebody else saying what you think hmm. Hmm. Oh, and, the and having of not the right to do that. someone else and having how the do right you define do the, the limits of, of damaging somebody else is the sticky issue yeah that's a that's a sticky issue it's a sticky uh, watermelon. What do you, <laughs> when you get that watermelon? You're like, Ooh, this is sticky. Should I put it in the bag? I don't know. I can always wash it at home. Is it on discount? Doubt or five. I want to hear what you think on free speech. Cause I can see, I can feel you yeah. ruminating <laughs> over here. Yeah. <laughs> can you see the steam coming off? my head? <laughs> Yeah. Um, no, uh, Trump was given every opportunity to use, uh, his media and he used it extensively for four years it's when they started when he started calling for seditious acts and uh revolt against the country is when they put a stop to it and dropped him uh, as a client um first of all these are corporations that are doing it these are privately owned uh or publicly dealt corporations and as of the re most recent laws they corporations are people and they have their own rights so you know, you can't get on there and one, it's a call to action when you tell people to go storm the Capitol. Two, it's an action against the government. Uh, they have every right to drop this guy from from their platform or do away with the platform altogether if they want to. Sure. Uh, it's not an issue of free speech. Um, if, if they were given other people platforms to do things like that, but not given him platform to do things like that, then it would be discrimination. Uh, but that's not the case either. So sure. we have to uh, pull back from that. We have to realize that he doesn't have any special rights in that area. He's just a citizen as well. He is just a citizen as well. I'd With like the to ability to address the nation should he choose to, which would sure. likely be covered heavily. Yeah. I want to right. weigh in myself and then we, let's do round tables to figure out like how we're all going to settle on this. In my opinion, it's kind of cut and dry. Um, like Eric says, there's free speech areas. You can, you can give a, you can say whatever you want in a free speech area. You can say whatever you want, you know, outside, but my bathroom, you are not allowed to go into my bathroom and say whatever you want. That's where I cut the lines. And if you say <laughs> you're violating my free speech by not letting me get into your bathroom, Ty, and give this speech about iguanas, it's like, you don't have, you, it's my bathroom. <laughs> you can't be in here. And that's how I feel about the same way with like Twitter. It's like, Hey, that's some guy's bathroom. And like, he's been nice to, you know, some guy for like the last four years and he has a terms of policy and it's a TOS that he made with his own team of lawyers. There's things you can and can't say on Twitter. And if you violate those terms and conditions you are kicked off the platform it's not it's not an ambiguous thing it's a cut and dry contract and i feel like when you have someone who is inciting violence as we had seen just last week 
that's a call to action for people to say, we need to hold someone accountable. This is the person that did this. What's the best course of action and what kind of conduct yeah. do we want to set as an example for the other people who share this platform? Because if we let this slide, the next person who says really sed either seditious things or really violent or hateful things against people of color or, or, or women or things like that, they get to slide by because we've just let some guy <laughs> inside a bunch of people to storm the, the nation's capital. One last yeah. point, one last point. Uh, I think also we we hi, we elect people to represent all of America, not just not just private groups or small sections of America. And I feel like what was being said by the president, particularly towards the point where it was already obvious he was losing the election, was not in the benefit of all Americans and was in fact just benefit to himself. And I feel like at that point we have to start asking ourselves. Is the person that we were putting that we have in charge, who is voicing his opinion to the public, is what he's saying harmful beyond just the violence that we saw last week, but in terms of like our nation's national security and our ability to conduct ourselves with reason and respect on a, on a daily basis, or is that actually going to be hurtful? And I think at that point, it's okay to pull the plug on someone who's actively working out of our mutual interest or, or mutual benefit. Doubter five, you want to say something? Oh, just a quick thing that uh, Go for it. Uh, we do have laws against some types of free speech, like liability. Yeah. Um, on, not liable, liable, not liability, liable. Uh, and one of the things that uh, Trump has opened himself up to is when he called, um, well, it was a private conversation, but he did uh, eventually go public with it, is that when he called the, the Georgia uh, certification uh, administration, yeah, oh, and yeah. then accused him of, of malfeasance and accused him of, of not uh, properly vetting his job, that's liable. Yeah, and also threatening uh, him with he, legal action if they didn't. Exactly, him. and he has he has recourse. He has legal recourse. He can take him to court and on a private lawsuit, and maybe even a state lawsuit to to challenge him on that, and maybe get punitive damages from it. I do want to add. I think Chad has a good point in the idea of well. It's it's okay to draw the line here, but it's a slippery slope on both sides, right? Most things tend to be. And what do you do when there's a big interest that doesn't want to hear what you want to say? And I think in we can point at Google, YouTube, and and Twitter and say these guys worked in co and it, cooperatively to stop one voice, <clears throat> but we can see very similar things happening with like religion on the ideas of like e even vaccinations, even really honestly, but like evolution, how women's rights, uh, uh, should churches and states be separated? If that's the case, why do we have clergy in the Senate? <laughs> why do we, like things like this. And I feel like the voices that are like, hey, church state separation, we shouldn't have, you know, our elected officials be, you know, peddling more or less false hope on a weekly basis for tithe money. Uh, I say that kind of hardcore, but it's, it's, it's the fact of the matter. I also to say like, hey, um, small voices like, you know, secular points of views tend to be drowned out by big religion in the same sense that people can complain about big tech. Like, I think there's, cre there's a credence to the implication that we can easily, this, this silencing or cancel culture can easily be used for bad as well as good. And I think that's something we should be aware of and what can we do to get out of that? And like, it's decrying free speech, the the best way to go about it. Um, I guess we have some time. Chad, I'm gonna throw something out at you. I'd like to see if you can maybe uh, address that. Do you think there's parallels between what we had seen with big tech and maybe like big religion? And like, how would we go about addressing that on in an honest conversation? It's difficult. I think everybody should, um maybe skip a cup of coffee in the morning and actually sit down and, and speak to each other since we're talking about speech mm. uh, without bringing baggage to the table. Um, uh, the parallels between what big tech and uh, has done and what um, the, the religion, the, the religion argument, I big think thought. they're there. Yeah. Big thought. Sure. Mm. Um, but you know, I, I, this there's a, there's something that just keeps repeating in the back of my head and i feel like if i don't say it it's going to just chew up my mind it's i feel like i have the right to hear these people uh so i i feel like it's almost an infringement on my right 
to not be able to hear some of these dissenting opinions. Um, now, I, I don't agree with what Trump did. I am not a Trump supporter. Um, I'm even less of a supporter of what he's done at the Capitol or what he did at the Capitol. But man, uh, go try to find what he said. You know, I should be allowed to make my own decisions about what is good and what isn't good information. And if we're telling people that they, we know what's best for you to hear, well, you can't be trusted with this information. Uh, that's, that's where I think we need to draw the line. So to tell someone that they um, can't practice religion or non-religion um, because they couldn't possibly, your little mind can't possibly grasp the importance of what information we hold. We're going to have to make these decisions for you. Um, I, I just, I hate that. I hate it. Uh, I feel like I should be able to usher my consciousness around as I see fit to the sure. one shot I get at this life. And I don't want anyone in my way. And I won't get in anyone else's way if I can help it. Can I, uh, can I throw something out? About, uh, George, let me uh, get ready for the break. I want to throw out one thing. Um, Chad, I'd like to talk about this more in the second half of the show. Uh, something I'd like for us to ruminate during the break is um, the difference between uh, the idea of here's a platform that you have to agree to the terms of service before you even join. There's a little box that even President Trump has to click before he's allowed to post anything on there. So there's a there's a compromise of rules of engagement beforehand to before you join the platform. Whereas mm -hmm. with a religious section, it's we are going to tell you how to raise your kid. We are going to tell you how this baby's going mm -hmm. to be um, born. We'll tell you even whether or not you could have sex or not and what kind of sex you should have. Like before this kid's even raised in this family, religion's already there and deciding and making points and saying, you should have this, you shouldn't have this. And there's no consent to begin with. I feel like those are, I feel like those might be radically different institutions. And, and what we might be blaming Twitter for, we should be really directing towards religion because I feel like we walk into a Twitter situation with consent, whereas with religion, we don't have that. And maybe that's something we consider. Larry, why don't you take us out? We're at the bottom of the half hour. Sure. This is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back after this short break. 103.9 FM. WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Hello, and welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Dowder Five, and we're on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LP FM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, with us today on the show are Wombat, um, Boudreaux, Chad, Dread Pirate Higgs, and George One and George Two, or Buffalo, as we call it. Uh, where do we want to pick up there, Wombat? So we're going over latest purchases on Amazon, and I got a lot of really cool things. I even got myself a really, really nice tiny little fan, and it's such a fan! What a fan, what a fan, what a fan, what a mighty good fan! What a mighty, what a mighty, 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 mighty good, good fan. fan. Hey, guess what? We're going over listener feedback today. Uh, we got a lot of comments on last week's show, which was called Done with Trump's Gaslighting. And we're going to go over some of them today. Feel free to leave a comment. We'll go over them on next week's show. Uh, Addison369 says, hey, gaslighting, by the way, is done with the intent to make the victim feel less confident or more confused and therefore be less of a challenge or easier to control for the gaslighter. Just FYI. And I think we can see some examples of that there's definitely um a history of news editorialism that's become more prevalent and has made people a bit more skeptical of what our leaders are, say are saying or makes it harder for people to get true information and that's always been an issue especially since you know 24-hour news has been around uh ashley williams says lol i love the ending guys thank you keep keep it up <laughs> thank you ashley uh Comparative Reasoning says, hey, that was a great episode. At the opening, I was a little annoyed with the talk about uh, the DC coupe. I think it's, I think that, I think the overlooked thing was that it was more of privileged versus privileged in, D in DC. I see this coupe as people more or less trying to do the right thing, but for the wrong reasons. And that for, it made it not well at all. What do you think about the coupe attempt being mainly privileged versus the non-privileged? 
And as if, if this comment is good enough, I will make a video where I scream, where is the love, where is the love, where is the love? <laughs> yes, I know where that song came from. It was a highly political and social commentary song that sadly led to nothing beyond head nodding. Uh, well, you know what? Elephant was a jam. <laughs> Still, either way. And I think uh, it's always cool to have songs that aren't love songs. It's just, you know, spice it up. But... Sure. What I what I think generally about the coup is uh, there was the idea of hey you know compared to the summer protests where where there were peaceful protesters in, in Lafayette Park saying hey our lives matter we're being subjugated by the government and the government responded with you know intimidation tactics with helicopters flying over them um, National Guard troops being out uh, pe pepper sprayed with you know you know uh, rubber bullets arrests zip ties and then flip to, to flip just last week and you have thirty thousand white people storming the Capitol and there's officers taking selfies with them on the first floor where they're chasing black officers or Capitol Police officers up flights of stairs just two up floors above that um, they're helping people out of the building they're escorting them down the stairs there's just a very big disparity between how people are treated based on how they look in America and I feel like if anything this coup has been a magnifying glass on what's already been an issue with us in terms of like international outcry crying of like, hey, we call ourselves number one, but that's only if you look a certain way and if you if when you live here. And I think it's I think it's an important thing to consider. Um, just going over the last comment we got from Data's Trading Room. Hmm, if the president has the power to use the military to take over the country and the law allows for this, then you guys are toying with fire. I hear this before every U.S. presidential election. If something can happen, it will happen sooner or later, unless people can prevent it. Um, we can probably lead off with this. I think uh, the idea of if we have a guy who's willing to post things on Twitter, well, how long will it be before we have a guy that uses more established um red tape and, and means of power to in, in to enact their power because we were lucky that Trump did not have military support but he could have easily been a bit more persuasive a bit more suave and use back channels instead of you know this public platform to try to maintain his power and now we would have been in real big problems because that actually does happen in the world you can look at Venezuela you can look at many other successful dictatorships who would never take a chapter from Trump's book, but who Trump has taken many chapters from other people's books and just was not as successful. George, I want, I want to weigh on you. Go on ahead and say the thing you were trying to say beforehand. And then what do you think of the idea of like, you know, was the ban a good thing or not a good thing on, on social medias? What, well, so I, I think what we're going to find from this is um, some legal definitions hmm. to to apply to social media platforms because we've never had them before. Mm. You know, we have we have the question, and this has come up already in other contexts. Is Facebook, for instance, a common carrier or are they a publisher? And my answer to that would be they are neither. You know, there has to be a third category created for this type of a platform. You know, I think in my own case, I view Facebook as a de facto common carrier because it is an essential factor of society now. If I You say that even though you don't even have a Facebook account. You're, I, I, I'm, okay, we're on radio. I'm not going to say a certain word. Um, <laughs> George is very anti-Facebook. He's like, don't, don't put me well, on no, that Facebook. No, Forget about it. Because I am anti-surveillance, and uh, yeah. Facebook is a surveillance business. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's, a lot of people don't realize that. I a Facebook account uh, for that reason. Yeah. I have worked in high tech, and I know how easy it is mm. for a web, you know for a website to to pr um, adopt a surveillance methodology yeah. on its users and so i'm very sensitive to this and for me to not be on facebook is to be isolated it's to be uh, expunged from the culture around me so sure. i've paid a very dear price for this i would say facebook is a de facto common carrier but let me let me go on to my second issue here, sure. which had to do with what Chad said about uh, free speech and being unable to to hear opposing voices. And, you know, um, I brought up earlier the fact that uh, inciting somebody else toward violence is an abuse of free speech and should not be permitted. 
uh, Chad wants to hear those voices, I think. And um, so th this brings up the libertarian perspective on this, mm -hmm. which is go ahead and let everybody say whatever the hell they want to and sue their ass later on if they blow it. And this is, this is the method of the Southern Poverty Law Center. And they have brought successful civil court cases against fascists who have incited violence and you know, made them responsible for their words. Um, they've, they've drained the bank accounts of some mm. very bad fascist people. Okay. They've been successful. So that's the other the route. George, Who's we're going to say see. it's the wrong one. They've okay. also been unsuccessful, too. They, they've gone after the wrong people, like Majid Nawaz. Um, Southern, Southern Poverty Law Center went after him, and he ended up suing them and winning <laughs> because, yeah, they were trying to call him a bigot. And he's yeah. ex-Muslim. Or Chad, go ahead and weigh in on this. I want to hear what you want to say. Um, yeah, I think I, I probably... <laughs> When I say those things that I was saying earlier, I was, it was really just a word of caution. It was tread, tread lightly. This is not something that we want to just say, yeah, hurrah, let's, mm. let's get rid of as much of this free speech as possible. Because I think Rogan just had the former head of the ACLU on, and he was talking about this exact thing. Uh, and I agreed with much of what he said. I haven't listened to the entire podcast. It's over on Spotify. Go get it. It's fun. It's good. Um, but what you've got to be careful with is yes, you, you, you may be successful in silencing these people that are saying the things that you hate. Um, but we flip flop. This is this, con this country is constantly in a power struggle and the people that are in power flip flop quite a bit and you don't want to be on the crap end of that stick. You know, we, we create, these horrible things and we wind up becoming victims of them on occasion sure. and we just have to be careful that's all and i do i do want to hear dissenting opinion i do not want to be in a silo i cannot parse i cannot make sense of a situation with limited data and i need more data i need to know why when when i see people acting the way they acted um at the Capitol and just before the Capitol, when they were all gathered, I want to know why we're able to whip people up like that. Sure. I don't want to push them underground where they become more dangerous. I want to see it. I want to know who these people are, not a list. I'm not asking for a list. I want to talk to these people. I want a list of them. <laughs> <laughs> I want a list of those guys. I'm hey, terrified of lists Chad, because I don't want to end up on one. I want them to get arrested. I think that was definitely something that, like, you know, for every per military member of my family who sacrificed, got shot, died, I think it, they deserve to be recorded. But uh, I would I say this. Every one of them. Chad, this is a question for you. I'm wondering, uh, have you given thought about what was mentioned in the first half of the show in the idea of if I come to a platform with an agreement with what the platform's rules are? For example, if I said, hey, I have a cookie. If you take this cookie off this plate, I won't let you, we can't play basketball anymore. And there's like, well, I have free rights to cookies and you eat the cookie. I'm like, you just ate the cookie. You can't play basketball with me. It's like, oh, right. that's a violation of who I can play right. basketball with. It's like, no, we had this agreement ahead of time you yep. broke it and we can't play basketball anymore versus yeah, the only uh, the only like problem the, oh go ahead sorry versus like the religious mindset where it's like i'm just taking everybody's cookies i'm taking 10 percent of your <laughs> cookie <laughs> your cookie your cookie and you don't have right. to say so like i've already got your grandparents i got your parents and i got you yeah i feel like yeah. there's a difference there and there there is there is i don't want the implication I, to be twitter and google and amazon on a throne said we don't like this guy and we're gonna take him off it's it's very clear what their agreements are in their TOS is, is and it's very mm -hmm. extraordinary the event that happened that allowed that to happen for four years they were fine making money off of the ads that he was bringing by having people funnel to his site and, and subscribers but when the capital got attacked they said that is an obvious violation of what we had set up as a contract and I think I we can look at this list in black and white, see he breaks it and cut terms with this person as we would anyone who would do the same thing. There's the, there's the rub. Just as long as we're making sure we're doing it with everyone that makes the violation. Uh, sure. Okay. That's the, we're going to exercise it. We're going to, we're going to put these laws in place so that we can choose to exercise our authority. Oh, when we want to, um, now, I want to, I want to interject here. It needs to be done. 
I'll, and I'll just say one last thing. If Barack Obama had probably incited the government, he'd, <laughs> we would have handled this way faster. So I think it's an obvious thing that in my head, I'm wondering why did this take so long? Because I can point at many other things that Trump had said and be like, this is a, a violation of your terms of service. Please right. get rid right. of this guy. Right. But uh, here, here's where I, here's where my argument of I, need, I, break I need the right to hear. Sure. Go ahead. Yeah. George, you got to raise your hand. We can't have everybody talking at the same time. What's up? Hey, my my um, connection. Can you guys hear me right now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. I've lost my video. I've lost everything else. So um, anyway, um, uh, what I wanted to say about terms of service, again, this comes back to whether these platforms are common carriers or not, or publishers for me. When I first got internet service was in 1996, and I was working for the telephone company. They provided very good service in the office, so I signed up for my internet carrier with them. And the terms of service said that I was not allowed to say anything bad about the telephone company. My, my carrier. That's crazy. My internet provider was right there in the terms of service. They could they could cancel my account if I did. You can't. And I have no pirated software. That's part of terms of service. Yeah. Well, What's if that? they cancel your account, then you yeah. have legal recourse, I guess. Uh, they may be in the contract, but you can challenge the contract and take it uh, to court to invalidate it sure. because it's it's in, it's in violation of your free speech. Sure. And that's probably why that, that that's probably why that doesn't occur now uh, to the same extent. Yeah, yep. I once uh, applied for a job. As a matter of fact, I've seen this on more than one employment application, where it said you by signing by applying for this position application, where you've already done all of this work to fill out all these apps, and it's hard work. It's it's not easy stuff to do. You get to the bottom of it. And it says by signing this application, you you agree to give up your uh, right to a jury trial. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's nuts. That's it crazy. says, and you agree to arbitrary uh, uh, arbitration, uh, a third party arbitration. But I mean, you're giving up a basic right, and they're just asking you to, but it's a condition of employment. Now, you could take that to court and say, you know, they don't have the right to to ask me to do that, but who's going to do it? I mean, especially the, the low echelon people who are needing a job. Yeah. Uh, it's an attempt to intimidate. To, yeah, it is. It really I also is. think it's a good point. I'm going to go to dread and George, but like the idea of if we all had $10 in our pockets and just $10 in our pockets, then mm -hmm. yes, everyone should be able to say whatever they want, whenever they want to, or maybe if that's could be the case. But when you have billionaires and people who aren't billionaires in the same world, then we obviously have different volumes that we can all speak at. And at that point, what's really the best way to go about making sure the people who have the most money and will continue to have the most money don't speak for us. Like how do we keep, make sure the Joe Rogans don't incept our opinions of the world because they just have the largest microphone compared to what right. we might have. We all have nuanced worth hearing and I, and I can agree with it's, it's important to hear dissenting opinions. All right. Dr. Five, what what you want to go to? Well, yeah, um, this, don't, I started to say, don't get me started on the cash basis of of justice in America. Sure, but I, I'm speeding I'm there. tickets. I'm there. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, no, one of the most recent problems that they or laws that they've enacted at uh, the Capitol is that after this insurrection, you know, they they passed a rule saying that. Uh, if you bring a gun into the chamber, you know, we're talking about even lawmakers now, sure. uh, they, the first offense will be $5,000 fine. The second offense will be $10,000 fine. Half of the people who serve in, in uh, Congress are millionaires. You know, this is a fine that's going to affect some some of them, very few of them, but you know, it's just a slap on the wrist. It's it's not hardly yeah. even that. Uh, they don't care. They're going to carry that gun in there uh, against the rules, against the law, you know, and, and pay the fine. Who cares? But uh, poor people or people who are just barely squeaking by cannot afford to do that. So their lot, their right to do that has been infringed, where the millionaires' rights have not been infringed hardly at all. Dread anyway. Pirate, we got to get to you. What have you? What have you been thinking about? 
Well, uh, we were we were talking about the uh, condition of employment and that uh, some people are required to sign off on things. Um, I have a security license. I also have a firearms license, which is a federal a federal uh, a federal identification. Nice. And if you, you if you see there, I've got my 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 tricorner on, which yeah, is uh, my religious headgear. Yeah. <laughs> this is my security license. Mm -hmm. which they would not allow me to wear and threatened not to give me this license, which of course I am required to have in order to work. And so essentially under duress, they've coerced me to take a picture without my uh, religious um, <laughs> headgear uh, as a condition of employment. So there you have it. I mean, here I'm I'm going to the you know we're going I'm going to court here in February against ICBC, um, and it could be argued, of course, that uh, a driver's license uh, as a privilege is um, absolutely necessary for uh, certain types of employment. As a realtor, it's absolutely necessary for me, and yet um, I'm being bullied and coerced into not wearing it or you know giving up my right to pursue uh, my freedom of expression in order to accommodate whatever their beliefs are with respect to it right. uh, Sikhs of course are, are allowed to wear turbans and um, you know and all they have to do is is walk in sure. and identify you know walk in with a turban and if you're of the appropriate skin color uh, guess what you're in Lake Flint mm. if I I have argued, and this is part of my milk stool argument here for, for court, is if I came in to ICBC with a turban that had been, you know, put on me by someone who has been a Sikh, a practicing Sikh, and I just proclaimed, I'm here uh, to get my photo taken, I am a Sikh, I'm a believer in Sikhism, take my picture. I do seriously wonder if they would have a pause uh, to challenge me on that. Right. And then by what test of faith would they be able to test that? Cool. So right. there you go. That's my bit. Buffalo, back on free speech. What do, what do you think about what we've been talking about? So yeah, far I think this is the basis of a lot of our problems. Dark Money. Dark money. money. <laughs> I thought that was a Swedish guy, like Dark Mo. By Jane, Jane Mayer, and she talks about uh, well, she talks about the uh, Coke Foundations, all 259 of them that exist, uh, that are nonprofit organizations and pay no taxes, but write uh, legislature, uh, write bills to and pass them around to state legislators to to uh, determine what they want, uh, and, and they've got the money to back it up. Uh, hmm. uh, Edelman's gone now, but and one of the Koch brothers is gone, but we still have one more of them. Uh, so it's these people that have the, the clout and, and, and uh, basically uh, have a lot to do with money and justice in this, in this country, in my opinion. Cool. I, I want to bring up some salient points. We still have some time, so how about this? Um, I, the Bill of Rights, in my opinion, is a document that protects us from the government. It gives us rights so that we don't have to have repercussions from the government. It's not a tool for the government to say we should have more rights to do what we want against private companies, which because we are the private company. We are the people that make businesses. And it's an easy thing to forget especially when there's a disproportionate amount of people in, in positions of power that might look like, like white men. It's an easy thing to forget that. But if you don't look like them, if you don't look like the government that you know, controls your life, it's a very, very poignant thing to always remember that your interests are, need to be protected and you should be aware of them because when the government wants those interests or tries to twist those interests into a narrative that protects them against you, that's a problem because that's not what the Bill of Rights are for. That's not what free speech is for. It's for people, not the government. And so if a person of government says, this is a violation of my free right, I should be able to do this. Like you're the president of the United States, <laughs> you're Congress, you already have the limitations. We can decide what we want and we give you the power to, to rule over us. It's not the other way around. Um, what, let's see, Chad, what do you think about that? We'll just go. 
Chad, you like to go long? Let's go for it. I like to go long too. <laughs> I'm good. Uh, you well, first. yeah. Yeah. So the rights, um, I, I think the government protects us from each other. Um, and we, we make things like corporations and, and entities and we're protected from uh, all of these powerful groups. We're protected down to the level of the individual. Uh, so I think I am folk. I focus generally on the power in the hands of the individual. Earlier you were talking about um, platforms and how in, at least I, I read it like it was uh, important to you that even the smallest person would have the same amount of voice, even though they don't in this country. And I think the internet and as much as I, uh, I have trouble with some social media, not platform specific. I think we as a species weren't ready for this, but I think <laughs> I really don't. I, 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 I think it's important to protect everyone's right down to the individual and not break up into groups because never has the individual had more ability or more power uh, over their own voice and where it goes and how many people can hear that voice. And I think it's, it's time to pull some of that power back away from the groups and, and ensure that our government doesn't infringe on our right to be loud, outspoken individuals. Sure, it's fine to break up into groups. That, that's one thing we're able to do because of social media, but understand that you are still an individual and you have your rights and the rights are given to you as an individual. Cool. Boudreaux. Can, can I underscore a point that you were trying to make, Wombat, to, to Chad's, what Chad's statement there? Um, yes, the individual, this, the, everything you're saying makes perfect sense. But when that individual is operating as uh, the president of the United States, that we're no longer talking about an individual. Now we're talking about someone who was hired, elected to do a job. And, and, and that's where I think this, the, the, the argument falls apart. It's, it's a president doing it. It's not an individual. He's just acting like an individual. Mm. Or I, I don't disagree. Yeah, yeah I don't yeah. disagree. The, the Guys, president has a lot more platform than I will ever have. Yeah, it's very rare you can be blocked on Twitter and then be like, I, I got 14 other news media outlets that'll, that'll carry this video for me. It's all good. Uh, yeah. I do want to wrap up. I think we had a really good conversation. This is so good, man. I wish... I, I I wish I could talk to you guys for so much longer than when we did. Maybe we'll do some off time. But uh, Chad, you need to come back. You were great. You really do need to come back for sure. Uh, yeah, if you sorry have time, I went long on all this. But enjoy. Buffalo. Buffalo. Yeah. Buffalo, we love to have you back too. What was that book? You mind plugging that book one more time? Dark Money. Whenever I see oh, it. Dark or... Money by Jane Mayer. By Jane Mayer. talks about the history of uh, big money in this country all the way through to how they write legislature, uh, legis uh, write bills and literally pass them on sometimes to be used verbatim hmm. uh, in state legislatures around the country. And Very it's nice. all based upon uh, protection of uh, uh, protection of individuals or politicians and, and being successful in their primaries and, and that whole thing. Very cool. It's, it's really quite good. Nice. Joy Parrot, where can we find your stuff at? So uh, I broadcast this uh, every Sunday morning. For me, it starts at 8 a.m. PST, uh, and uh, we do the whole hour live. Uh, we had, uh, well, we had four viewers today, so that, hey, that's kind of nice. good. Yeah, that's yeah. good. What are you talking about? That's, um, good. that's good. four times find more that. than we've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Lil Ma has been pretty good. He's, he comes on quite regularly. What's up, Lil And uh, Data's Trading Room, he's been on too. Um, but you can find me uh, on YouTube at uh, Mind Pirate, M I N D P Y R A T E. And uh, since we we're, since uh, uh, George there plugged a book, I'd want to plug this book. It's uh, it's called Empire of Illusion, The End of Literacy and the Triumph of Spectacle by Chris Hedges. Um, so cool. I can always put that in the chat. George, you got anything you want to plug? I do not. <laughs> Totally fine. <laughs> Eric, do you got but any I'll music? Make, you got I'll make any a little music? plug at the end. I'll okay. make a little plug at the very end of the show. Okay, okay. Uh, Ujo, you got any music you want to uh, recommend for anybody to listen to? Well, I, we're putting the finishing touches on a original song that I'm uh, working on with a buddy. He's actually writing it for his, his terminally ill wife. 
Um, and uh, I, I played bass on it and we got all that recorded. He's got it. And I'm just doing the drums now. And it's nice it's tough because it's punk rock. And I'm going to get in trouble on the comments uh, for calling <laughs> Majid Nawaz an ex Muslim. I know it. I apologize. I misspoke. So, it's fine. Chad, we welcome you fire. You we can handle me. it. Atheists right, don't right. burn. We all know yeah. that. Uh, Chad the Impaler, do you have a recommendation for tips for people who want to flip a home? What's the best way for them? <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it. Uh, yeah, this is taking a lot longer than I anticipated. <laughs> vet your contractors mm -hmm. and then vet them again and mm -hmm. have at least three, have a bench at least three contractors deep or be ready to um, eat up all or much of your profit. Uh, that I, I've spent a lot of time waiting uh, for contractors to call me or show up, and it's brutal. This house I'm doing is right next door, so it's it's difficult for me to not just go over there and try to do it all, and it's overwhelming. It's too much. Got so it. no, 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 just just don't do it. And uh, I did I did also want to mention that uh, Boudreaux and I are we we've made it a a solemn vow to finally kick off our own uh, series of podcasts uh, which we're going to record another one right after yeah, this. Yeah, give so you a soon, mic coming recommendation. Soon. Yeah, like yeah, hope the, yeah. I hope the mic turns out well. Okay. Yeah. So I'm let's chat on YouTube. You can find me on YouTube. Uh Larry, why don't you take us out? And my own content is on digitalfreethought.com. You can find our blog there, the radio show archives, uh, atheist songs, many articles on the subject of atheism. My book is called Atheism, What's It All About? It's available on Amazon. If you have questions for the show, send them to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org, and we'll answer them on future shows. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. This has been Digital Free Thought radio hour remember everybody is going to somebody else's hell the time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real until then don't worry about it enjoy your life and we will see you next week at seven o'clock on wozo radio in knoxville take care uh, everybody and say bye-bye 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 you are going to somebody else's hell not me <laughs> <laughs> see ya bye-bye bye-bye Thank you.